Hi there. Welcome to this really exciting build of a flying wing. This is Voodoo 6. Now in the last video we got the basic structure of the wing finished and what we need to do now is add a little bit of strength to that by doing the shear webbing and we also want to put in the engine mounts, the rails for the engine which again has shear webbing around it and we need to do that really before we can do anything else and progress with the wing. So we'll take a look at that now and, uh, and get that done. Well, the first job I'm going to do is the shear webbing because it's just going to provide a lot more strength to the wing very quickly. Uh, it really does make the wing a lot stronger because you've got the top and bottom spar and by putting the shear webbing on if it's either side it creates a box section or if it's just one side like a C channel and that really does add some strength and by doing it now it, is, it gives us less chance of the ring, wing twisting, warping or, or getting damaged while I'm continuing the rest of the build so it really does make sense to, to do it now and I've cut a piece of 116 balsa for every bay between the ribs they're just falling down all the way along I haven't done the central section with balsa and I'll get to that in a minute so I've done all five compartments on the front of the two spars and then on the rear of the spars I've also done shear webbing for the first two bays coming out from the centre I haven't actually glued any of this at the moment I'm going to go along in a minute and I'll just run CA along the spars here to glue that in for the front ones and then for these back two either side I'll run CA along the top and the bottom and that will wick it and, uh, and, and hold that nicely that really does give it a lot of strength now when we're doing any kind of shear webbing you can see that the grain runs vertically now if you imagine we have our two spars like this if there's a lot of pressure a lot of bending motion on that wing to bring the wing up like this to bend it then there's going to be a huge uh, horizontal shear force that's going to act on this shear webbing as these uh, as these try to bend up it's going to want to slide that and cause a shear force on that shear webbing. Now if the grain is running horizontally then the chances are that that could split and if that splits through through pressure on the wing bending then I suspect the wing would be done for. By having vertical grain like this it makes the shear webbing so so much stronger in resistant to those those forces of bending so we must always have vertical grain in shear webbing uh, and not horizontal grain right well we've got all of the um, shear webbing now CA'd in and uh, it's surprising that's added huge strength to the wing it just feels so much more solid if you try and just just flex it a little bit so that's great we will have to run along the top here with the sanding stick just to get off a few little proud pieces so that uh, when we come to sheet this top section it just goes on uh, nicely and the same on the back side here because we're going to have cap strips on there but that's great it's a really good job to do a very quick way of adding huge amount of strength to a wing right now we'll put this on one side and we'll have a look at the uh, the engine well let's get this uh, this engine mounted and what I'm going to be using is these uh, beach hardwood rails they're half inch square and they're just under 12 inches long and the engine I'm mounted as I've said before is one of my Irvine 40s and uh, the beauty of this is that if we want to upgrade and we want to put a, a more powerful air engine we can put in the Irvine 46 of which I've got and the mounting holes are exactly the same size and spacing so that's that's really good but rather than use the whole engine I've got a, a crankcase here which is exactly the same another Irvine 40 and um, I'll use that it's just easier to use right well we could 
just put the um, let's just put that on there we could just put the engine on the front like this and uh, hold it in roughly the right position and run a drill down and uh, job done but I like to think we're better than that I've seen so many cases where engines have been damaged with the lugs being drilled out bigger or people using drills that have caught the exhaust out there here and actually put a bit of a groove in it's in fact there's a little bit of a mark there which could be from a drill it's so easy to damage these it's soft aluminium and I do I like to think we're better than that as model makers and we can be a bit more a bit more sophisticated so I'll show you how I'm going to do this anyway so I've got my rails just on a couple of pieces of uh, 3 8 balsa just to give a bit of clearance for the engine I'm going to put on a weight on the back just for the moment and I'm going to make sure these front of the rails are parallel like that now we also need to make sure that the rails are running parallel to each other and if we measure the front we've got 34 millimeters and if we measure the back that's 33 so we'll just widen that a little bit there we go 34 and 34 so those rails are parallel to each other now so I'm just going to put on a weight another weight on there just to to stop those moving or, or, or to make it harder for them to move so the fuel tank will go on the back there we'll have a couple of spaces eventually in here and some 116 sheeting for the tank to fit on this rear section of the mount will then fit into the wing and uh, eventually being fixed at the back here with the uh, onto the spars and that 116 plywood shear webbing so we'll leave those weights there we'll get rid of the tank now the measurements for the fixings are usually available whether in the manuals online somewhere I mean here's a, a data sheet I've got for this which just gives you the the measurements we need to work out everything that uh, that, that we want to do so turn that off now the holes are actually three millimeters out from the body of the the crankcase here so on both rails I've drawn a line parallel to this edge here and these are three millimeters out from the inside edge and I've done that on both so that will determine the line on which we do our holes now the next thing we do is we put on the crankcase and we work out roughly where it needs to be back there uh, we don't need masses of rail coming forward it, it, it serves no purpose so we mark on roughly where those first holes need to be and hey presto we put a line across and we've got our first our front two holes or sorry uh, points where we need to drill holes now to work out the rear holes we just look at the data sheet and I think it was 17.6 um, and if we measure this and have a look yep and we can then measure 17.6 millimeters back for the location for the second hole and we'll just put another line across to make sure that they're both parallel now if you can't find a data sheet it's really easy just to, to measure it yourself it's uh, you need to be careful to get it right and once we've got that marked out like that we can just put the crankcase on make sure it's nice and tight together and if we look down now into those holes we can see the cross that we've just drawn the pencil line these these crosses here of where we need to drill so that now is all marked out and ready to go and what I would say is drill it with a pillar drill a bench drill something that will give you a nice vertical hole down the last thing we want is to be doing this by hand and going crooked and coming out the side or, or, or whatever so do that with a bench drill very carefully right I'm going to do that now and then we'll come back and we'll have a look 
we'll have this bolted together and we'll have a look at what we're going to do to the rest of the uh, to the rest of the rails to to finish off this mount and just give it some uh, give it some strength well I'll now have the engine or the crankcase mounted onto these um, these beach hardwood rails and the holes lined up beautifully I was really pleased with that it, it, it was just so easy I've put in a couple of spacers quarter inch balsa wood spacers here just to keep the rail at that standard distance or parallel distance 34 millimeters which is great and I've made a couple of pieces of balsa or cut a couple of pieces of balsa that will just fit on there top and bottom and that will allow the fuel tank to uh, to sit on on there now the, the the tubes coming out of the tank will probably need to be splayed a little bit just to give the pipes a bit of clearance from the uh, from the crankcase now this seems quite quite a long distance here quite a big nose to stick on the front of a, a flying wing and uh, if we have a look at the plans we can see that it's kind of well it, it's exactly as per plan engine in line fuel tank so you know we'll we'll see how we'll see how it goes I have to remember that there is quite a, a large boom or a couple of booms at the back of the wing which will help with the balance so hopefully it, it, it won't be too nose heavy but we'll we'll see how that works out and we've got room inside the wing to move the battery and and that to, to balance it well, I've now got the uh, the, the balsa on the, the 116 balsa glued on to the top of the rails and the bottom of the rails and that will provide a, a good bit of strength and I, that needs sanding now and, and just cleaning up with regards to this fuel tank I've put in the connections and just splayed those out you can see that so that when the tank is on there it will go a little bit closer to the engine than it would if I hadn't splayed those and um, it, it won't keep the pipes. I'm going to put on a piece of balsa here I've just cut which is just going to provide a stop like that and at a later date I will put some kind of stop on the back here as well just to stop the tank from moving backwards and forwards and the tank I think is going to be held on just with elastic bands so we'll see how that that goes how secure that is if I put on enough bands that should be should be fine now as far as fitting it into the wing, the rails, these hardwood rails, that top line needs to pass through the very centre of the wing. So we've cut these uh, slots here into the leading edge and the very top of that hole there is on the centre line of this leading edge. It was quite hard to determine exactly where that was just because it was slightly deceptive having this sheeting on the bottom but I've done that anyway and those slide in there quite nicely it was quite easy to cut those in the end I just used my large scalpel did the horizontal cuts first and then just cut them sideways and, and that went fine now so we're on the center line there Now to make sure we're on the center line further back where it goes through the spars I just drew the centre line on this brace or, or shear webbing should I say the shear webbing's uh, 116 ply and then I just marked out where the uh, where the holes go for that and I've done that front and and back and so these now just need to be epoxied in place as will the uh, the actual um, rails as well there we go and that just pushes back as far as as far as it will go now on that sheeting and that gives enough space for the tank to be fitted on like that with uh, with this stop of course so it might be I don't need to put a stop on the back because of the leading edge I, I, I'll see how that looks and feels once it's once it's done what I would say is when I'm gluing this it's going to be a good idea or, or well actually when I was preparing the, the holes I put on a, a ruler like that and just made sure that um, that this mount was nice and 
parallel with the, the front of the wing. Whoops, it's falling apart now. But anyway, we've got that nice and square, nice and uh, in, in the right place now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to epox epoxy all of this into place. And then we've got our shear webbing and our engine mount all nicely finished. So I'm quite, quite pleased with that. Well, that's all epoxied up now. And with the shear webbing, the whole wing feels really quite substantial. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe, please come back and see how we get on with the rest of the build. It's really good, it's starting to take shape now.